us fly There's no hiding from your grace I can't deny you're for mine And it's unrelenting chase And I was on the edge of deception Caught up in my own hesitation Until you love to go Church, help me raise this up. I raise a hallelujah in the presence of my enemies. I raise a hallelujah louder than the unbelief. I raise a hallelujah My weapon is a melody I raise a hallelujah Heaven comes to fight for me I'm gonna sing in the middle of the storm
and welcome to Radius Church Online today. So excited that you would join us today for church. My name is Aaron. I'm the lead pastor here at Radius Church. And here at Radius, we believe that our lives are better when we put Jesus Christ at the center of it. In other words, we'd like to say it like this. When you let the one who designed you define you, you become the best version of yourself. And that way we can have hope and healing for our lives. Really, that's the mission that we're trying to share with the world, and that's why we exist as a church. And I'm super pumped today that uh, we can still meet online. During this crazy season where so many things are happening, our God is still God. He's the same yesterday, today, and forever. And He loves you. He loves me. I absolutely believe that, and I'm super excited about what God is doing during this season. If you've been a part of Radius Church, we've been asking you to do three things. Shout them out if you know them. Three things. Pray, give, and reach. Yes, pray, give, and reach. In fact, today we are starting 21 days of prayer and fasting for our church. And so we, we want you to be a part of that. We're going to have prayer services every morning at 6 a.m. on our website for you to take part in. And so we're asking you to wake up early and, uh, and catch that because it's so important that during this season that we set apart some time to pray. I believe it's super important uh, that we need to meet with God right now and ask him, God, uh, what do you want to do in me? Move your power and your grace in our life, in our church. So we're starting that 21 days of prayer uh, and fasting. And maybe some of you have never fasted anything before. All the information as far as how to fast and, and what that looks like is on our website for you to take part of. Uh, so just go to our website and it'll tell you everything that you need to know about fasting and then also the prayer services are on there as well. And now the second thing we're asking you to do during the season is give. I'm telling you, the local church mobilized is the hope of the world. And so when we're mobilized to go out and, and be the church and be the hands and feet of God, we can make a difference. In fact, just yesterday, uh, we, we passed out bottled water to homeless people. Um, I just think it's awesome to give a cup of cold water so that they can be refreshed during this hot season. And I'm telling you that they were so grateful. 
And so that's just one of the ways. I know this week we're actually getting ready to uh, pass out some food to some people in need. And let me just tell you, the proverb says this, those who refresh others, they themselves will be refreshed. Amen, everybody. And so we got to be in the business of refreshing others. And so because of that, we're asking you to give. Like it's important during this season to keep the church strong so that we can meet the needs of people, so that the gospel can go out and so that we can love the least of these. Amen, everybody. And so because of that, we're asking you to give. Here at Radius, we don't pressure anybody to give. We just ask you to pray and ask God what you should do. I know that when we all come together and we all are obedient to do what God asks us to do, we can make the biggest difference and God's message and God's love can go forth in this world. Amen, somebody? So uh, all the giving options are going to be there on the screen. You can give by text. You can give online. Uh, super easy. And you can give via the Facebook donate button. There's a lot of people that have been using that as well. And uh, just we're trying to get the message of hope and healing out. And we're trying to mobilize the church to be the hands and feet to meet the needs of people. That's that's the goal of our church. Uh, that's why we do what we do. So I just want to thank you. I want to thank you for giving to the church. I want to thank you for giving uh, your tithes and your offerings uh, and bringing your generosity before God. Okay, so pray, give, and then reach. Now, we reach by doing two things. We reach by serving and we reach by sharing. We want to make a difference in this world. But we just want to love the least of these and serve our city. This week, we're going to be giving out food to those in need. And uh, if you'd like to be a part of serving in any capacity for anything that we do, uh, just text the word serve to the number that's screen and we'll make sure to get the information to you. I think it's so important that we wash the feet of this city. The next thing we do is we reach by sharing. We share. What does that mean? That means that this message speaks to you today. We would love it if you would share it. Just press the share button and then also take the link and text it to somebody else uh, who needs it. We really believe when you share the link, you share God's love. It's a tool of evangelism. Why? because you never know who's on the other side of that share. Amen, everybody? So we share the link. We share the love. I absolutely believe that. So today's message is a throwback message of a message that we, I did back in 2018, going through the first chapter of Colossians. Uh, and I, it's designed to really help you understand even more about Radius Church, about who we are. Super excited to bring it to you. And so grab your Bible, grab your pen, and get ready to hear a word from God. God, we just thank you. Uh, we come before you today. We ask you, God, to speak to our hearts. God, we, want to, we don't want to do any of this without you because you're the reason why we do everything. So we ask you, God, to speak to our hearts. Speak to us, God. Help us to see what you want us to see. Help us to hear what you want us to hear. Help us, God, to become who you want us to become so that not, it will not only change our life, but God, it would go through us and change the lives of somebody else as well, that you would help us make a difference in this world because we are called to make a difference. And I thank you for it in Jesus' name. And those who agree with that prayer, set. Amen. Amen. Did y'all know that God loves short people? <laughs> Some of y'all that's short better say amen again. You know, God loves short people. He loves short people, right? <laughs> He does. Oh, you don't, you don't, you don't believe me? I'm going to prove it. I'm going to prove it. Ready? Matthew 28. Is this part of your message? Kind of, but not really. The Bible says, lo, I'm with you always. <laughs> yeah. So why, why are you saying that? Well, here's the deal. I'm like the shortest of my siblings and like the shortest in my whole family. Okay? Like my dad is 6'3". My son, who will probably be 6'3", is right at the same height as me right now. It's not fair. Skip the generation. What the heck? Not fair. But we have a DNA, and here's the deal. You, you were born, you didn't get to choose where you were born. You didn't get to choose your parents. You didn't get to choose some of this stuff. You is who you is, and God made you the way he made you, beautifully, uniquely, and wonderfully, by the way. But we're all born with the DNA, and we all have attributes of, uh, of the people that brought us into this world. It's like, how tall are you? I'm 5'9 and a half. When you under six feet, we count in halves, okay? <laughs> and we always round up, all right? You know what I'm saying? When it comes to our height or our growth, 
you know, honestly, it can vary based on several different factors. But when it comes to our spiritual life, growth a lot of times is optional. We think because we're phys- our physical growth, we automatically grow this way, and sometimes in other ways we don't want it. Um, spiritually, we think we automatically are going to grow too, and it's just, it's just not true. It's just not the case. And so what, what does that look like for us? So I'm going to take us today through the first two chapters of Colossians. And I just want, I want to discover a little bit more about our spiritual DNA. Like, who are we and what are we supposed to do? And honestly, if, if you're listening today, this is kind of one of the core messages of Radius Church. This is kind of who we are and our DNA and what we're about. Because if you capture the heart behind this, you'll be able to live a life that is victorious, not just for you, but you'll be able to live a life making a difference in the lives of others. You're going to be able to discover your purpose, you're going to be able to, to, to find out who, more who you are, and you're really going to be able to make a difference. Because at the end of the day, what matters is not the life that you've lived, but the legacy that you've lived towards other people. What, what, and so God, when he gets up in heaven, he's going to ask you two questions. There's two questions that God's going to ask you. Number one, he's going to ask you this. Uh, what did you do with my son Jesus? And, and you're going to want to say, well, I gave him my life. He, I made him the Lord of my life. And he's going to ask you, the second question he's going to ask you, and it's at a different time, he's going to say, hey, I gave you some gifts. I gave you some talents. I gave you some stuff uh, to do something for me. What would you do with that? Like, what did you do? And so this message is really tailor-made to that. So why don't you open up your Bibles. You can open it up physically or on your iPhone. You've got the notes or on the screen. Follow along as we talk about this. So Colossians chapter 1 verses 1 and 2. This is, I'm just going to start it out. It says, Paul, the apostle of Christ Jesus, by the will of God and Timothy, our brother, to God's holy people in Colossae. Colossae is the city um, that was back in that day, and, and Paul went to be a missionary to that. So he's writing to them because he established a church there. And he said to the faithful and brothers and sisters in Christ, he says, grace and peace be to you. Grace and and peace. What is grace? Grace is unmerited favor. What does that mean? You can't work for it. It's given to us freely. We can't earn it. You know that you can't earn God's approval? Did you know that on your best day that you can't impress God, and on your worst day you can't disappoint him? Man, that's a weak amen. Can you, you believe on your best day you can't impress him, and on your worst day you can't disappoint him? Because a lot of us, like me, it's like, man, God, I, was, I let you down. And he was like, ah, you were never holding me up. And when you understand that, man, it's not a love that's condemning. It's a love that, man, I, 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 I can be embraced by that. And that's somebody that I can follow because I know it's not based on my efforts. Why? Because I fail. But you know what? He, he never does. Man, that's a good message. So grace is unmerited favor. Grace and peace. Peace is something that, let me tell you, you can't find in a bottle. You can't find in a pill or any other form. You can't find in substance. You can't find it in things or in status or in job or in your kids. You can't find peace. Peace can only be found in God. It only comes from God. It's peace to you. That's what? That's from God our Father. Keep reading. Verse 3, it says, We always thank God, Paul said, the Father our Lord Jesus Christ, when we pray for you, because we've heard of your faith in Christ Jesus and the love that you have for God's people. The love that you have. Like we're praying for this. This, this is what you're saying. All of God's people, the faith and love that spring from the, here's this word, hope. From the hope stored up for you in heaven. It's an interesting word. And about which you have already heard in the true message of the gospel that has come to you. So he said, we always thank, we always thank God when we, when we pray for you. We always thank God for you. So Paul's like, he sounds like a proud parent. Like we heard of your faith and we're super proud of you. But there's this, there's this word that he says that this faith and love that spring up from the hope that is stored up for you. That there is hope that is stored up for you when you follow Christ. See, what I see in this world today is a world that has lost its collective sense of hope. It stopped believing, and it started defending what it knows. And it's searching for so many different types of answers, and it can't find it. And it's so insecure, it's trying to be secure in the things and the knowledge that, it, that it's trying to understand. Why? Because they're trying to put a facade to make it feel like they have everything all together. When in fact, 
You and I both know it's not true. And it's not working. Which is why the love of Jesus Christ and the gospel of truth is able to save our soul. It's hope that is found in Christ. And I'm here to tell you today, maybe you're here today and you feel hopeless. Maybe you feel like that. Like, you know, maybe it's depression or despair or emptiness. Maybe it's a broken relationship. Maybe it's that. Um, maybe you've had suicidal thoughts or you struggle with addiction, alcohol or drugs. Or maybe you're here today and uh, you're dealing with sickness and whatever it is, you've lost hope. I'm here to tell you today that you can find hope. You can find it again. Well, how do I do that? Well, hope is not found. It's like, well, what is hope? Well, it's, it's not found in something. It's actually found in someone. It's found in someone, and that person is in Jesus Christ. Like, our hope is from God. Our hope is from God. When we, when, when we understand that, we can run to the one who is the source of hope, and he can lift us up. Let's look at verse 6. It says, the Apostle Paul says, In the same way, this gospel is doing something. It's bearing fruit. It's bearing fruit, and it's growing throughout the whole world world. This gospel, it's doing something. It's bearing fruit. It's bearing fruit. It's growing throughout the whole world just as it has been doing among you since the day that you heard it and you fully or you truly understood God's grace. What, 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 what is this thing saying? The Bible isn't just information. The Bible is transformation. This is super important to understand. Because this is in the same way the gospel is bearing fruit and it's growing. It's bearing fruit and it's growing. It's bearing fruit. This gospel is bearing fruit and it's growing. We, we have a tendency to think that we're just, we turn over a new leaf. And like we got, I'm sure we got a lot of resolutions from this last year that we haven't had fulfilled. And yeah, we're just going to try and, you know, turn over a new leaf and just try to become better. But that's not what this is talking about. Because I'm here to tell you today that a new believer has new life. It has new life. You, you have a changed purpose. You have a new direction, a new focus. You, you, when you become a new creation in Christ Jesus, the old has passed away. You become brand new in God. A person that has never before existed now existed with a renewed sense of hope and purpose. Somebody say a good amen. amen. So we no longer live for ourselves. We live for the one who gave his life for us, right? Aren't you glad that God changed you into a new person? Aren't you glad for that? I'm so glad for that. So glad. And when I look at the scripture, it says the same way this gospel is bearing fruit and it's growing. You see, I think that us as a church, I think that we should be fruitful, not just busy. I think that we should be fruitful and not just busy. A lot of the times we, we want to be found faithful in God, but God's not just looking for us to be faithful to him. He wants us to be fruitful in doing something for him. In fact, this scripture says in the same way this gospel is bearing fruit and it's growing. But the evidence that we're following God, that we're following Jesus, that our relationship is moving forward is that we, in fact, are growing. I think we ought to be fruitful. Let's keep reading. Verse 9, it says this, For this reason, since the day we heard about you, we have not stopped praying for you. Everybody say prayer. prayer. Have you ever asked somebody to pray or somebody says, oh, like, oh, 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 you know, I'm, will you pray for me? And you're like, yeah, I will. Or, or they say, you know, oh, I'm going to pray for you. And you're not sure if they will. You know what I mean? Right? You're like, uh, I don't know. Like, there was a text recently, and somebody asked us to pray, asked me to pray. And, and I take that seriously, so I prayed. But there's always that wonderment, like, are you really going to pray, or are you just saying you're going to pray? Like, am I going to do this? Throw it up. Hey. <laughs> right? Okay, I'm going to pray. Whoop. Like, we think that's prayer, like in our head. Like, that's not, that's not prayer. That's the prayer symbol. You see people like, oh, I'm going to pray, and then you see all the praying hands everywhere. And you're like, oh, I wonder if you really were. So in that text, I wrote out a prayer. Why? 
Because I wanted somebody to see something to solidify in them that I know, I know they got. I, I, I know that these people are praying for me. And at least if you could agree with that, the prayer that I sent in a text, in a text form, you could, you could have more faith in that, yes, my, my, my family has got me. My small group is behind me and they're, they're for me. And so the Apostle Paul is talking about this. Hey, we, we, since the day we heard about you, man, we're praying for you. We're active. We're doing something. But, he, but he, he goes on to say what he's praying for. He says that we continually, verse 9, we continually ask God to fill you with the knowledge of his will through all wisdom and understanding that the Spirit gives. So that, so that you may live. So that you may live worthy of God. That you may live worthy of the Lord, please him in every way, bearing fruit in every good work, and growing in the knowledge of God. So he said, we're going to pray this prayer so that you may live. And so here's, here's what I noticed about this scripture. Is that we're like, we're going to bear fruit. And all of that is defined as growing in the knowledge of God. Why is this so important? Because we think that, look at me real quick, we think that knowledge is content. We live in a content world. We live in a content-filled world where everybody is trying to give you their opinion. Heck, they're trying to sell their opinion to you. You know, this person doesn't know how to make an act, so I'm going to do a YouTube video on how to make an act better than them, and I hope that you subscribe. And it's like, how many videos do you need on people making acts? Like, my goodness gracious. Like, I, I, I needed to do an act, okay? I needed to, like, my act broke. And uh, I needed to fix an act, and I'm an act, and I'm like, all right, let's go on YouTube and see if I know how to do this. And I was like, do, 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 do. And I'm like, my God, how many people does it take to change a light bulb? Holy cow! Like you only need one really good one, but everybody's trying to improve, and it's fine, I get it. But we become so content oriented that it's just it's this, it's this. I gotta know something. I gotta know something. Here's the deal: growing in the knowledge of God, it's not content. It's not just knowledge. It's may live a life worthy of God. Doing what? Bearing fruit. God wants you to do something with what you have and who you are. And growth is not in what you know. Growth is in what you do. Growth is in a life that is moving out and loving our city, giving hope, bringing healing to those in, in Christ Jesus. Amen, somebody. So this is what we think. So we can't think in terms, we need to have content. We need to have the knowledge of the word of God. But it always should be motivated, not by a desire to be puffed up to know something, but it should be motivated by love to do something. We should be able to be bearing fruit. We should be bearing fruit. I'm going to have you participate today. Turn and, turn and tell somebody real quick. Say, it's not what you know, it's who you know. Now, tell the other person that you decided to ignore. It's not what you know, it's who you know. It's not what you know. Because these people, at, these people at this church in Colossae, they knew a lot about God. They knew a lot about God, but they didn't really, they, they were saying, well, you know, they're so filled with knowledge, and they were like, we're trying to this age of information even then. They called it the age of enlightenment back then, and they're like, we're trying to learn, and we just want to know. And God says, Paul comes along and says, dude, guys, it's not what you know. Like, stop trying to look better than somebody else by acquiring more knowledge. I could care less by what you know. It's about what you do with what you know. What are you doing? What are you doing? What are you doing? That Greek where the growing in the knowledge of God, because the Bible was written in Greek, and really what it means in the Greek is to become fully acquainted with. Growing in the knowledge of God, this knowledge of God means to become acquainted with, to become fully acquainted with a person. It's, 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 it's about a person. It's about Jesus. And so at Radius, we can't force you to grow. We can't force you to grow, but we can make the path extremely clear. And we can create an environment where faith is present, 
where you can believe, hear, understand, and know, and then give you an opportunity to go and make a difference bearing fruit in somebody else's life. The question is, is how hungry are you? How hungry, how hungry are you? Turn to somebody and say, I'm still growing. I'm still growing. Still growing. So the Apostle Paul comes and he qualifies this process. He says, here's the deal. You need to be bearing fruit. We're going to live a life to doing this, bearing fruit in every good word. We're going to grow in the knowledge of God. And this is what he said in verse 13. He says, for he had rescued us from the kingdom of darkness and transferred us into the kingdom of his dear son who purchased our freedom and forgave our sins. Write this down if you're taking notes. God rescues us out of and he takes us into. God rescues us out of, and he takes us into. God is always more interested in replacement over removal. God doesn't just, he doesn't just remove your sin. He gives you his grace and gives you a fresh start. He's not, he's always interested in replacement. He wants to fill you with himself. So that verse again says, for he Jesus has rescued us from the kingdom of darkness and he had transferred us into the kingdom of his dear son who purchased our freedom and forgave our sins. He took us from the kingdom of darkness and transferred us into, from, into, out of, and into, out of your past and into your destiny, out of your brokenness, come on, and into healing. Come on, out of addiction <laughs> and into wholeness. Out of sickness and into healing. Come on, out of chaos and into peace. He, he takes you out of and he moves you into. And he's looking for someone of faith to trust and believe him. But here's the thing, for a lot of people, but what I find a lot of times is that people... Um, they're trying to step into their purpose and they're still holding on to their pain. It's like, I'm going to give it to you, God, but there's just some stuff that, that is dragging. What do you mean? I, people have gotten lost in the transfer. They've gotten lost in the transfer. And I think many of us have stepped out of our pain, but we haven't stepped into our purpose. And I did this before. I'm going to do it again. Let me ask you this question. Is that a step? Is that a step? Some of you are like, yes, no. Some of you are like, I ain't answering. You ain't tricking me. Mm -mm. I ain't going to have it, Pastor. I ain't going to ask because I ain't going to look stupid. But some of you all that, that, that of it. So here's the thing. Is it a step? Well, I would say yes and no. But the thing is, is that if you understand that this is where God is calling you, you're taking a step in, in, into your purpose. You're like, yeah, but it's not complete. It's not complete. It's only a half step. Because for a lot of people, we're trying to step into your purpose and give my life to Christ, but we're holding on to our pain. And we're half stepping. We're half stepping. We're not, we don't really fully cross over. So, what does that mean? It means that we're too in love with God to enjoy sin, but we're too kind of into our pain and our struggle really to enjoy God. And we're miserable. We're miserable because we're trying to hang on to some of the hurts from the past, and yet we're trying to embrace our future. And we're like, I can't really go. I'm stuck. Ever felt stuck? See, God wants you to release, to step into your purpose. You could become all that he's called you to do. Amen, somebody? Because I'm telling you, following Jesus is easy. It's half-stepping that's hard. So how do I do that? Because here's the, here's the good news. Here's the good news. Look at me real quick. For some of you that feel like that today, look at me real quick. You don't have to be stuck. The good news is you don't have to be stuck. You can step out of your pain and into your purpose. But how do I do that? How do I do that? Write this down in your notes. Number one, you got to put Jesus first. 
you got to put him first, first, first. Colossians, again, Paul talks about this, verse 17 and 18. He says, he existed before anything else. He holds all creation together. Christ is the head of the church, which is his body. He is the beginning, supreme over all who rise from the dead. So he is, help me out. He is first in everything. Like being first matters. Some of you are like, no, it doesn't. That's because you came in second a lot. Listen, why, why do we have like, we have championship games. Like I love sports, so I'm a sports guy. Like, we have the Super Bowl, and we have the NBA championship, and there is only one team that comes in first. There's only one team, and it matters to them, right? It matters. You think you're going to go up to the second place team and says, oh, let me give you a participation trophy. You're going to feel amazing. Does it matter to them? No, they want to come in first. Now, it's for little kids, it's, it's okay. I get that. I'm not knocking all that. Pastor Aaron, you're just, well, listen, my, I, put my, I coached my son for two years in basketball, okay? And, like, they said, you want to coach? Do you want to coach? I'm like, no, you don't want me to coach. They're like, no, we need some coaches. I'm like, no, you don't want me to Why? Because I will coach a team. I will coach basketball. I am a coach, right? I'm a, we're going to run second and third grade. We're going to run plays. We're going to run screens. We're going to run, we're gonna, if, you know what I'm, if you know basketball, you know what I'm talking about. Okay, and so they asked me to coach. So I told them I did, and I had parents yelling at me on the other side. Why? Because they had to change the score at halftime in five of the games. Because we destroyed them. (laughs) It was ugly. It was terrible. And we won every game, like by a lot. And so our kids are so proud that we won every game, and they're only, they're only in second and third grade. But listen, they know who really wins, okay? They know who wins. It's not like to pretend that they don't know. And we had, oh, we had kids with all different skill levels and all that stuff, and it was great. And, and we tried to make them better, and I tried to empower them. But at the end of it, you know, everybody got a participation trophy. I thought, that's okay. But I went out. I bought a bunch of trophies that said champion and I gave it to my team at the pizza party that we had for them. Amen, somebody. So here's the deal. Why? Because you need to know, hey, listen, we won, and we dominated, and it was amazing, and you're great. Some of you look at me like, that's just terrible. No. (laughs) First matters. It's not a small thing. Look at me. Why don't you go drive to Walmart on a Saturday during Christmas time and you got your blinker on and you're trying to turn right and somebody swoops in and tell me that first don't matter. Mm Mm-hmm. Hey. Or somebody who is driving in the left lane and they're going 60. What are you doing? Get out of the left lane. You don't belong there. Well, I'm helping everybody else go the speed limit. No, you're not. You're terrible. Get out of the way. Oh. If, you, if you're there at Walmart or at Costco, you say, no, 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 no. I was here. First. I was here first. I was here first. Why? Because first, it matters. It matters to God. So here's my question to you today. Here's my question. What in your life is trying to cut God? What in your life is trying to cut in in front of God? Because he's supposed to be first. What are we putting ahead of him in our life? What in your life is trying to cut God? What is it? Because I believe that after everything Jesus has done for us, he deserves to be first. And for everything in our life that tries to cut and take God's place, we ought to learn to be able to say no. No, not today. You need to move to the back of the line. I'm not letting you take first place in my life. God, he gets first. So let me give you some perspective here. Paul's writing. Let me remind you. He said this in verse 21. He said, this includes you who are once far away from God. So you were his enemies. You were separated from him by your evil thoughts and your actions. Yet now he has reconciled you to himself through the death of Christ in his physical body. 
As a result, he has brought you into his own presence and you are holy and blameless as you stand before God without a single fault. But you must continue to believe this truth and stand firmly in it. Ephesians says it this way. It says, you were once dead because of your disobedience. You were once dead because of your sins. But God is so rich in mercy and he loved us so much that even though we were dead because of our sins, he gave us life when he raised Christ from the dead. And it's only by God's grace that you have been saved. Listen, Jesus didn't come to make bad people good. He came to bring dead people to life. He didn't come to make bad people good. He, made, he came to bring dead people to life. Some people say, well, why is there a hell? And why is there this and that? Listen, hell's not a place God sends people he's mad at. Hell's a place where people go to pay for their own sins if they want to. You don't have to pay for your own sin. Jesus Christ paid it for you. I'd rather him pay the bill for me. Amen, somebody. Write this point down. That God gives me purpose. God gives me purpose. Because a lot of people don't know what their purpose is. Verse 24, Colossians 1 says, I'm glad when I suffer for you in my body, for I am participating in the sufferings of Christ that continue for his body, the church. Paul said, I'm glad when I suffer. I'm glad when I suffer for you in my body. I'm glad when, when I go through some stuff because I'm participating in some stuff that continue for the church. I'm, I'm, glad, I'm glad to inconvenience myself for the church. And here's the question. When's the last time we suffered so somebody else can hear the love of Jesus? When's the last time we were inconvenient? When's the last time we took some time out of our life to extend an invitation so that others may know? When's the last time we took some of our time in order to serve and so that others may know? When's the last time we suffered, we took away from our time or our schedule so that we can share the love of God with somebody else? Because Paul's in prison. He's in prison writing this message so that other people can know. So here at Radius, like if you're a member of our church, we're going to ask you to do a few things. We're going to ask you to go through the growth truck. We're going to ask you to get in a small group. We're going to ask you to serve on the dream team. We're going to ask you why. Because we're interested in getting this message of hope and healing out to the world. And when we get this message out and you help us get this message out, it transforms your life. It actually does more for you than it does through the life that you're trying to transform. Why? Because Jesus said it's more blessed to give than it is to receive. What if we developed an attitude like, man, I can't wait to come to church. Why? Because every Sunday is somebody's first. Every, some, every Sunday is somebody's first Sunday. It's, it's somebody's first. And my job is to give my life so that others may know. This is why we tell our church, we tell our dream team this, that church is, is not all about you. It could be about you a little bit, but it can't only be about you. Why? Because this place is here so that others may know. I said this place is here so that others may know. How, how, how ridiculous of me to create a church, to create a service that's all about what I like. And yet, while other people are lost, dying, eternally separated from God. But yet, man, I'm feeling great. I don't think, let me say it this way. I don't think Jesus, when you get up to heaven, I don't think he's going to look at you and ask you, did you enjoy my presence? Now, should we? Yes. But I don't think that's what he's going to ask you. I think he's going to say, hey, listen, listen, listen. Who'd you bring with you? The currency of heaven is people. We should have an amazing experience. We should hear the word of God. It should change and transform our heart. But the purpose has always been about and always will be about the lost sheep that the father, he said, I'm, I'm going to leave the 99 that are safe to go search and to seek the one that was lost. Somebody better say a good amen in this place. Because that's what we're about. Lives hang in the balance. 
lives hang in the balance. We're so grateful for you that serve on the dream team that make it happen every single week, make a difference. Can we, can we give it up for all of our dream team in here? Come on, give it up. Now let's go make some more stories together. That's what it's all about. Aren't you glad that we didn't stop this church, we didn't stop reaching out before you arrived? Because, I've, you know, I've had people come up to me and say, I've had people in ministry say, well, pastor, we're just not getting fed. I'm like, oh, babies cry when they need to be fed. Adults go make themselves a sandwich. <laughs> and not that you shouldn't receive spiritual food here, but look at me real quick. We need to teach you how to feed yourself. You gotta learn how to feed yourself. You gotta have a personal relationship with God. You, you're not supposed to live a relationship with God through somebody else. Don't live your relationship with God through me. No. I should not be your standard, okay? <laughs> Some of y'all laugh a little too much on that, okay? <laughs> Jesus is our standard, He's the one who's perfect. We can't think so traditionally that I, I got to have a pastor speak into my life. I guarantee you that if you're listening today, that God will speak to you. He will move his words from my mouth through your heart because that's the way he works. I guarantee you that's the way that revelation works. But it's not supposed to stop there. He wants you to do something with that which you've been given. He wants you to go out and make a difference so that it molds your character. That Man, I'm motivated to... Do something, because growth in the knowledge of God, it is not knowing something, it's doing something. Amen, everybody. So here's four things that we do, and I'm going to close with this. I'm going to close with this, and I'm going to go a little bit fast just for the sake of time. We do four things, and they're found actually in Colossians chapter 1, verse 28. It says, Him we preach, warning every man, teaching every man in all wisdom, that we may present every man perfect in Christ Jesus. So him, we're going to preach who? Jesus. Warning, I'm going to explain what that means. Warning every man and teaching every man in all wisdom so that we may present everybody perfect, every man perfect. Perfect just means mature in Christ Jesus. So here's four things that we do at Radius. Here's our DNA. Number one, preach means to know God. That's Sundays. We want you to know God. 90% of people, over 90%, who give their life to Christ in America do so at a church on a weekend. And if that's the case, we were always going to make this place, this Sunday, this morning, this experience about those who aren't here yet, that they will receive hope and healing. Which is why it's easier to invite somebody to a place like this on a Sunday where they can experience hope and healing. So that means that Sundays just can't always be about us, right? Why is this important? Because heaven and hell are real. Like it's a real thing. Like it really matters. Like eternity matters. It really does. And we need to do our part. Number two, warning everybody. That's small groups. That's finding freedom. Life change does not happen in rows. It happens in circles. If I asked every single one of you and I said, hey, name the last five messages that you heard. You couldn't. But if I asked you, name five people that have impacted your life. I could do that. Because life change happens through relationships. Because this says warn. So this scripture says warn. So what is that? It's him we preach warning every man. You know, you can't warn somebody or correct somebody you don't have a relationship with. Let me say it this way. Have you ever had somebody try to tell you about yourself? And they don't know who? Hello? Or try to tell you, well, you need to do this. You don't know me. We friends on Facebook, but you don't have that right to keep. How dare you post that? How dare you say that? <laughs> Delete. <laughs> I'm going to block you. You don't know me, but if somebody that you know, love, and trust, if they speak to you and say, hey, they're going to be like, okay. Now it means more. Why? Because there's a relationship. I, I dreamt of a church, guys, that we could just be real, that we could just take off the mask and be who we are and be real and find hope and find healing. 
that we don't have to have it all together. As a matter of fact, if you're at this place, you don't have to fake it till you make it. You don't have to have it all together. You just got to be looking towards the one. And I hope and believe and I pray that you find and you put your faith in Christ. Because if you want forgiveness, 1 John 1, 9 says, confess your sin to God who is faithful and just to forgive you and cleanse you from all wickedness. But James 5, 16 says, confess your faults to one another that you may be healed. So if you want forgiveness, you got to go to God. But look at me real quick. If you want healing, you got to go to others. It's not just vertical. It's also horizontal. You see, we are the body of Christ. We are his hands. We are his feet. We are called to live life together. We are called to pray together, to worship together. Look at me. We're called to struggle together. We're called to lay our burdens together. you got to have a safe place where you can really be you and say, you know what, I'm dealing with this. Can you help me? You need a place where you can be real and find real healing. Amen, somebody. I'm telling you, there's a lot of people who love God, but they're not healed because they don't do relationship with anybody else. People say, it's all about Jesus. Well, yeah, but Jesus has a body, and it's you. You, 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 can, you can be that person to bring that healing and hope to somebody. Man, you can be that answer. It's amazing. Number three, write this down. Teach. Teach is our growth track. What is that? Discover your purpose. It's our growth track. Growth track is not a discipleship program. Small groups are. What are you saying? We don't teach classes that lead to nothing. Growth track help you discover your gifts and help you serve somewhere so your faith can come alive. And that leads us to number four. That you, we may present everybody perfect or mature. That's our dream team. We want to help you make a difference, which is why we believe in gift-oriented ministry. We help you discover your purpose. We help you discover who God made you. You were uniquely designed on purpose, with a purpose, for a purpose. And once you discover that, God wants you to do something to make a difference. And you do what God called you to do in the gifting that God called you to do it. And whenever you're doing something that you were made for, your faith comes alive. Because that word perfect just means mature. So say this with me. Know God. God. Find freedom. freedom. Discover purpose. purpose. Make a difference. difference. That's all we do here at Radius Church. That's all we do. But that's all God asks us to do. So here's the question. Here's the question. Where are you in this process? Where are you? Where are you? Where are you in this process? Some, some, some in here have, haven't made a decision to step into a relationship with Jesus yet. Some of us haven't made plans to be in a small group because we got so much going on that we're afraid of rejection. I don't know if they knew the real me, if they want me. Some of us are so afraid of ourselves. We think that we are nothing. I'm afraid that I don't have any purpose, that I don't have any gifts. But look at me real quick. God don't make junk. I said, God don't make junk. Because you are his masterpiece. You were created in Christ Jesus for good works which God prepared in advance for you to do. God has a plan for you. Or maybe you're here and you haven't joined the dream team. But God God is pressing on your heart today. Here's the last scripture, Colossians 1.29. The apostle Paul said, this is why I work and I struggle so hard. Depending on Christ's mighty power, that works within me. He says, I work and I struggle. Like, it's work, everybody. It, it, it's work. This word, this Greek word, struggle, in the Greek it means to compete for a prize. Why is it a struggle? Because we're working with broken and hurting people. And it's messy. 
but it's worth it. You, you're worth it. You don't think you, don't think you are, but you are. You're worth it to God, and he loves you. Would you bow your head today? Some of us are making decisions today with our heart because God wants you to take one step. And I would tell you, if you're here, let's go make another story together. There's stories of hope and healing waiting. But maybe yours is today. Maybe yours is today. Maybe you're in this room today. And you're saying, Aaron, I don't know God. I, I, maybe I thought I knew God, but I didn't really know God. I need to make a commitment to him. But all it is is a prayer. It's very simple. Really? Yeah. You know why? Because you can't work to earn it. Salvation can only be received. You're never going to be good enough to earn it. But you're never ever too bad to not receive it. He loves you. If that's you, say, I've never given my life to Christ or... I have at one time, but I need, I need to recommit my life. I need to come back to God. I need to come home. I need to come back to the family. Just say this out loud after me. Say, Dear Heavenly Father, I come to you in Jesus' name, and I believe you sent your Son, Jesus Christ, to this earth to die for me. And right now, I receive him as my Savior and my Lord. I ask you to help me to follow you all the days of my life from this day forward. I give you my life. I worship you and I praise you. Thank you for receiving me. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Welcome to the family of God. Man, I'm so excited that you made that decision today. And if you made that for the first time or maybe you recommitted your life, we would love if you would text the word next to the number on the screen. We want to give you some next steps. We believe it's important to have next steps and also have people who will walk this out right alongside you because you were never meant to do life alone, to do Christianity alone. We want to help you in these next steps that are super important for you to walk out. Amen? If you'd like to worship God with your giving today, all the giving options are on the screen. I just want to say thank you so much for being a generous giver and moving the mission of God through Radius Church to reach people in our city, to reach the, the hurting people of this world. Thank you so, so, so much. You know, when we give, we actually worship God. God, we believe that giving is an expression of our worship to God. And we're not pressuring anybody. Uh, just pray and ask God what you should do uh, during this season. Amen? Amen. Lastly, let, just let me pray for you today uh, as we go throughout our day. I just want to pray for you during this time. May the Lord bless you. May he keep you. May his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. May the Lord lift up his countenance upon you and bring you peace. I ask you, God, in Jesus' name, that we can make the biggest difference that we can this week with our lives. In Jesus' name.